Hey, this is Ali from cyclingabout.com. I've flown all the way from Australia to the Netherlands to check out the birthplace of my new touring bike. I'm lucky enough to have been selected to test ride a Koga on my two year adventure from Argentina to Alaska. So let's go check out the factory and my new bike. We're now deep inside the Koga factory where they assemble all of the world traveler touring bikes. It takes about one hour to build something like this. I'm going to leave that for the professionals though. All of the wheels for the Koga touring bikes are built in the factory here. So they're essentially hand assembled and then they roll down a little rail and they get tensioned by a truing machine to get the perfect accuracy. Koga do all of their quality control in-house. Not meant to be here. I'm not meant to be showing you any of this footage. You'll notice that all of the Koga touring bikes are made out of aluminium. Koga used to do steel touring bikes, but through their R&D processes, they've determined that aluminium is the better material to work with. Koga offer a lifetime frame and fork warranty on all of their bikes. So if something happens to the bike anywhere in the world, they told me that they're happy to ship a brand new frame and fork to you. Just walking along the Koga Hall of Fame at the moment. Could be me one day. We can dream. They keep all of the parts for their custom builds in these tubs, like this dynamo light for example, and somebody basically goes around and picks all the parts, puts it in a basket, and then it goes over to the building area. A really cool thing about the Koga signature bikes is that you can configure them online. So by clicking on the bike, you can change all of the parts of it, so I want to chuck on a different rack. I prefer the Tubus Duo. What that has done is changed the overall weight of the bike. So apparently that's really accurate. And it's also changed the price. So basically you get a visual representation which is modified based on weight and price. You can then go to step two, which is about personalizing the bike. So you can put your own name on the top tube there if you like. Once you head through to the next steps, that's essentially the start of the order process. So they'll ship the bikes anywhere in the world once they're configured. Um, costs 300 euro and you tend to have the bike in about five or six weeks. Are you guys ready to see something super cool? It's my baby for the next two years. These wheels are gonna take me all the way from the bottom of Argentina all the way to Alaska. There's internal cable routing, goes through the down tube here and pops out at the bottom bracket. Um, really, really neat cable system, which is basically designed to keep the cables away from the elements. Inside the head tube of the bike is a steering limiter. So that basically prevents the handlebars swinging into the top tube when you've got a front load. The paintwork is also super detailed. You can get your name popped on the top tube if you like. I've gone with a belt drivetrain, so these belts, they'll last me at least 15,000, if not 30,000. Um, they're completely maintenance free, I never have to lube them, they're completely silent. They are definitely the future for touring. Up the back I've got my roll-off hub. So the roll-off hub is essentially an internal gearbox with 14 gears inside. That'll give me enough gears to get right up and over the Andes, as well as enough top end gears for if I have a good tailwind. This is the eccentric bottom bracket. It allows me to adjust the belt tension on the bike. Koga put an eccentric bottom bracket in the bike just to give the frame the stiffest possible rear triangle. The chain stays and seat stays on this bike are as big as I've ever seen. I've been told that it just increases the stiffness when you've got a really heavy load. 
These are the triple B oversized bottle cages that I really like. So you can just use standard like Coca-Cola bottles or water bottles, um, 1.5 to two liters. And I just find that it carries a lot of water on the bike and you can replace the bottles whenever you need to. I run some pretty unique handlebars on my bike. These are called the Crazy Bars by Velo Orange. And essentially these bits up the top here allow me to replicate the hoods position on my road or, or drop handlebars. So I can get in a really comfortable aerodynamic position. And then for the off-road stuff, like if I'm tackling sand or rough dirt roads, I've got heaps of steering leverage because of the wide handlebar at the end. This is the Quadlock smartphone mount. You can put your phone on the handlebars. I prefer to use a smartphone for a lot of my navigation. I've got the plug dynamo charging system. This is a USB plug. I can basically charge up my phone, batteries, any of my electronics gear. This is my front dynamo hub. It's made by Schmidt. They're super reliable, really weather sealed. That's powering my front and rear dynamo lights. So we've got a Schmidt light at the front. And if we flick this across, we can actually direct the power across to the USB charger at the stem. These are the two inch wide Schwalb all motion tires. They're my current touring tires of choice because they've got a really, really low rolling resistance tested in labs. Um, I found them to be super durable. They've got a really hard sidewall on them, so you can take them on rough dirt roads and they should be pretty reliable. I'm using ride front and rear double wall aluminium rims. They're about as strong as it gets. They don't have any eyelets. They're just a really, really thick aluminium rim. The spoke holes are actually drilled at an angle so that there's no stress put on any of the spoke heads. This is actually a seat that I brought along with me from Australia. It's just a generic saddle. Um, I actually bought it in Cambodia once. And for some reason, it just works really, really well with my body. I run a pretty funky setup with my bike. I run the seat all the way forward on the rails with an inline post. And I have quite a large drop from the seat to the handlebar. That's just because I've come from a road bike background, so I prefer to replicate my setup to something I'm more familiar with. The brakes that I've chosen are Shimano XT hydraulic brakes. Been using these on the mountain bike for years, so I know they're pretty reliable. Um, I'm also pretty handy working on a bike, so bleeding them shouldn't be a problem once a year or so. I've got some front and rear tubus racks on the bike. These are both made out of steel, so they're ultra durable. Um, Tubus actually have a five-year guarantee on them. If you break them anywhere in the world, they'll send you out a brand new one, no questions asked. I've spec'd the bike with some Shimano XT clip-in pedals on one side and flat pedals on the other. I just find that these pedals are super durable and they give me the option to run um, standard shoes if I need to. A really cool thing about getting a custom touring bike is you get a choice of colour. So there's 10 different colours to choose from. They're all powder coats, so super scratch resistant. Most of them are a gloss finish, so they look incredible in the sun, but apparently matte black is a really popular option. Can't tell you how excited I am to get on this ride. It's my first aluminium touring bike, my first touring bike with hydraulic disc brakes. I think we're in for a good time.